Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. I'm glad the message might be short tonight. I'm getting up here a little later than normal. You notice how I said might be? (laughs) You know, and it's been a while since we've been in a topical series or gone through a book of the Bible. I love doing that. Unless the Lord intervenes and, and really makes a big change, I know what I'm going to be preaching on Wednesday nights when we do that. But when it's a different message all the time, I... You know, there, there's, some, there's, there's some work in that. And, and I'll tell you what, many times when I'm, when I'm wondering, maybe it's two weeks ahead of tonight, or, or maybe one week ahead, or maybe a month ahead, that I'm planning for this night what I'm going to preach. And what always comes through my mind, and many times it's me, I want to talk about one of the names of the Lord. We had a series on that about two years ago. And I love sharing the names of the Lord. And, and many times that's not the case. I haven't preached on the name of the Lord in a while on Wednesday night or Sunday night anyway. But tonight we are. Tonight that's the, I got, I just believe that's exactly where we're led. And so in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, we find a name of our precious Lord. And that name is author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I love it when I can say, this message is going to be so simple. I love it when I can say that. And, and And we would love for every message to be that way. But... But you have different, you have, you have one word that's all in harmony, but you have different things to talk about. And we talk about them in different ways sometimes. And so tonight, I, I really want you to, to help me that this message can convey by really thinking about faith tonight. What is faith? Can you, can you touch faith? Can you feel faith? Can you see it? Are we born with faith? Where does faith come from? Is it something that's always in us and then it arises to a reality and an activity? Well, this very name of our Lord Jesus, the subject in His name is faith. The author and finisher of our faith. You know, faith has more than one meaning. When we, when we think of the Apostle Paul who says that he has finished his course, he has kept the faith. That word faith is talking about what we believe. The body of truth. It never got adulterated from the Apostle Paul. He he didn't use it for wrong motives. He's kept the faith. He's guarded the faith. And, And so that would be speaking of what we believe. That word faith. When we look at this word faith, you might think that that would speak of what we believe because Jesus is the author of faith. But that's not what faith means here. It's speaking of believing. Believing in a Creator God and the Lord Jesus Christ as as Savior to Save us from our sins. We've trusted Him and received eternal life. And He's sanctifying us in our lives while we have faith. This is Hebrews chapter 12. The chapter before that is Hebrews 11. Heroes of faith. By faith. By believing Abraham and Moses and Noah did this and that. We just talked about that a few weeks ago. 
Noah did not build this ark out of his own goodness trying to save people. It was by faith that he did that. Abraham didn't go out looking for a city whose builder and maker was God relentlessly, continually, and leaving his hometown just because he was such an obedient man. He did it by faith. And then the the larger part of what we shared the other night was how Moses made a decision. He refused the luxuries of this world And he chose to suffer with the people of God. And he did that by faith. He did that because he believed God. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. There was faith... Now, now... Think, just, just think through this message, okay? That's going to get us through it. There was faith before it was our faith. Faith existed. Faith does not begin as ours. We can't place faith in our hearts. We can't grow faith in our humanity. In our, in our emotions or our mentality, we can't produce faith. It's a spiritual product. It's a heavenly product. We, we can't make it and possess it on our own. Think about it. Without Jesus Christ, faith would not exist. Saving faith. That is. I mean, He's the Savior. Saving faith wouldn't exist without Jesus Christ. The truth of the Trinity and God's plan of salvation doesn't need our faith for it to be true. It's true. It's real. Whether we believe or not. It doesn't need our faith. I think I mentioned this verse the other night, but Romans 3.3. What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? No. No, God doesn't pack up and go home and, and curl up in heaven just because some people don't believe. If no one believed in the Lord... That would not change the person. That would not change the plan. That would not change the promises of God one bit. So faith does not need a person. But a person needs faith to be saved. All right? This faith, it's not the body of truth we believe, it's the conviction that God exists and He is the creator and ruler of all things. He is the provider and the bestower of of the gift of salvation, of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. Faith is believing which saves us. And it sanctifies us. And it changes our eternity because we all begin headed for hell. But when, when faith happens, and we're going to talk more about that, our eternal destination has changed And our life has changed on this earth. Some people, through the years thinking of comments, some people get a little bothered by that. By the way, I got bothered by that when I heard somebody say, say, your life takes on a change once you get saved. I had made a profession of faith, and I was very bothered by that statement. 
And I went to the Sunday school teacher and I said, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, what, do you, what, what change are you talking about? Come on over to the house, Kenny. I don't, I don't necessarily like to be called Kenny. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind if you call me Kenny, but it's not my favorite name. Ken, Kenny, Kenneth. He called me Kenny always. Come on over to the house, Kenny, and we'll talk about it. Well, I didn't do that, but about 12 weeks later, faith hit my heart, and I was saved, and I understood what he meant by our lives are changed when we're saved by faith, saving faith, not, not dead faith, not, not just a, some kind of mentality faith, saving faith. We're not perfect, but our lives have taken on a spiritual, internal change when we're saved. And there, there are outward results and evidences of that. So faith changes our eternity and our everyday life. The subject of our Lord's name here tonight is faith. I'll call this the starter of the subject. Jesus is the author of our faith. Jesus is the author of faith before He's the author of our faith. See what I did there? There's faith before we had it. There's, there's faith before anybody had it. Because it's within what God has set for it to take for a person to be saved. As a matter of fact, when you look at this verse, you will find that word O-U-R italicized, which means it was added, it has not done any harm. It has helped us to understand because it is our faith once we've believed. But you can also read it without that word our, and Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. That word author means to lead. It means the first. The one who takes the lead in anything and furnishes the example. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by the devil, he, he had faith in the Word of God. And he used the Word of God as his defense against temptation. The one who takes the lead and furnishes the example. Jesus is faith. And he's the first example of our faith. He's the leader of all of the believing. Jesus gives faith for faith to become our faith. Okay? Let me say that again. And it might not do any good, but I'm going to say it again anyway. Jesus gives faith for faith to become our faith. There was a family of the church. They've, they, they moved away, I think. But when, when this certain man was called on to pray, almost every time he prayed... And I, I don't hear anybody else say this in prayer, but he, and he's right. He said, I want to thank you, God, for giving your son for us and giving us the faith to believe in him. Well, one thing this takes care of is, oh, if I just had the faith of so and so. Oh, if I just had this faith or that faith. In speaking to people, they say, I have my faith. And when you hear people talk about faith, what many people have is faith in their own faith. Faith is only as good as what it's in. And saving faith is only given by the one that we're to put that faith in. Jesus gives faith for faith to become our faith. And He gives it by His Word. Romans 10, 17, Faith cometh by hearing, 
and hearing by the Word of God. Whenever you were saved, since, since Jesus came into my heart, what a wonderful change in my life He has wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Thank you for those songs. Whoever picked them out, God bless you. David, good music director. What was I going to say? (laughs) Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're saved here tonight, it's because you heard the word of God. You either read the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. You either read how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was buried and raised again the third day according to the Scriptures. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You heard the word of God to get saved. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You either read the Bible or you heard a sermon about Jesus, or somebody told you about Jesus, and how He died for you, and you're a sinner, and He died for your sins, and if you trust Him, He'll save you. One way or another, it came from the Word of God. And what the Bible says about itself in Isaiah 55, 11 is, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Jesus is the author of faith. Jesus is faith. See, faith is not something that we dig down deep to find in ourselves. It's not in a natural makeup of a person. The natural human being is without it. A baby's born. Oh, listen to that baby coo. Look look how cute that baby is. Listen to that laugh. How beautiful is that little baby. But that little baby is without faith. That's why we raise our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. You can provide, you can put a meal on the table for your kids, you can put food on the table, you can put a roof overhead over their head, but it's worth nothing if we do not raise them in the truth of Jesus Christ to give them the greatest possible opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ. The natural human being is without faith. It's not within us to create, create it within ourselves. God's always planting seeds, and don't get me wrong, when, you, when a person looks out at nature, and they're dabbling with the idea of believing in evolution or calling themselves an agnostic, when you look out at nature, you know a man didn't build what you see out there, like the way he built this building. Nobody saw anyone build the core of this building before we expanded it. But we know man built it because creation proves there's a creator. And when you look out in nature, man, there's, there's someone far above our ability that did that. It wasn't a blast. It wasn't a boom. Someone did that. And so God's planting seeds, but saving faith only comes by the Word of God. It takes the power of God, the drawing and the seeking from Christ, and the conviction of the Holy Spirit for a person to be saved.
If there's any trouble with a day that someone went from dead in sins to alive unto God, that, that's trouble right there. We may not remember the date. I do because it was Father's Day. I even remember the time because I was in Sunday school. But that's the reason why. But, so not everybody remembers the date, but, but we remember the day that Jesus came into my heart. What a wonderful change in my life He has wrought. And, and He gave us faith. He placed faith before us that we could, that we could take it Take this spiritual product from heaven and believe in the Lord Jesus. We could reject Him. He's been rejected and He can be rejected. Or that faith, that conviction, we can take it and place it in the Lord Jesus to be saved. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It takes God. It takes what God has done for a person to be saved. It is the gift of God. Jesus is the author of what we receive this gift through, faith. And by the way, He offers it to all that anyone can come to Jesus and be saved. The Word of God is for everyone. For everyone to hear, for everyone to be convicted of, and for everyone to place their faith in Jesus. So the starter of the subject, that's what we'll call that when we see that Jesus is the author of our faith. But He's not only the author of our faith, Jesus is the finisher of our faith. That word finisher means perfecter. Some other versions got that right. I know that I've seen it on signs and plaques and t-shirts and, and, and some versions say perfecter. And they got that word right in the meaning of it, but they missed a lot of other words in other uh, translations. Finisher means perfecter. It means to carry through completely. It means to finish. To make perfect or complete, we're thoroughly furnished by Jesus through the Word of God, which gives us faith. He's, he perfected it for us. He's also a perfect example of a life of faith. Again, in that last chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, where it talks about heroes of the faith. It contains a list of the heroes of their faith. And they got their faith from Jesus. They got their faith from the Messiah. Jesus was faith. There was faith before anyone had it. He's the, Jesus is the perfect highest example of faith. And we not only find that name in verse 2. I hope, I hope we got tonight... So far that, that it's, faith is not about us. Faith is not the product of the human being. And, and some, can, some just have a dose given to them of more faith than others. No, faith comes from the Word of God. It comes from heaven. It comes from Jesus. But we not only see a name, we see an aim in this verse. It says, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. We will never find confidence as a Christian. We will never find spiritual confidence or spiritual joy by looking at what we can do. By looking at how much we do. By looking at how much we pray. We surely can't find confidence or joy by thinking about how we feel. I love to feel good. I love to have a good time in the Lord. And there's something about that that I could say it makes me feel good. 
but if you hit me, I would feel like hitting you back. I mean, we, we have to be careful with feelings. Don't make feelings a criteria for life. Because this is what's going to happen. Make this your standard for life. No matter how we feel, the Word of God is true. No matter how we feel, if you're saved, this Word is in you. And you have every promise in this Word. And may we learn and trust every one of these words. No, that, no confidence or joy by focusing on any of our own effort. That never gives assurance. We can never provide rest for our own souls. There's nothing we can do that will give our souls rest. He's the giver of that rest. Walking, relying, trusting, trusting it in, to Him. I can't get on my own, Lord, what you can give. And my cartwheels aren't going to get it. We cannot make ourselves content, but looking unto Jesus. Looking at who Jesus is, the faith He started, the faith He perfected, gives rest to our souls. And it encourages us. Faith is not about self. It's never to be in ourselves, but in the Lord Jesus, the one who gave it. We're to give it back to Him. Where do we share it? We share faith with Him. Our aim can, and think of it, and this helps in daily life because He's our aim. He, we find an aim here, looking unto Jesus. So therefore our aim, our consuming, cannot be in our suffering. It can't be in our sin. Thank God we're not desensitized to sin and we're convicted of sin. But our aim can't, our focus and our consumption can't be all up in our sin. Or Satan. Or the system of this world. You know, every now and then I feel led, or maybe Pastor Stone feels led, and, and, and a sermon will be preached on Satan. The sermon will be about him. And we need to warn one another about him. That's true. I mean, he has many names. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. But our, our lives are not to be consumed in him. Look, he's going to be loose after that thousand years. And he's going to go out to deceive nations. But God still has a move. And we're fighting from victory. We're in battle, but the war's over. We're not to be consumed with him or the system of this world. Our aim, it must be in the Savior. Is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to read something Charles Spurgeon said, and we're going to close. He said, if we would at once overcome Satan and have peace with God, it must be by looking unto Jesus. Keep thine eye simply on Him. Let His death his suffering, His merits, His glories, His intersection, intercessions, be fresh upon thy mind. When thou wakest in the morning, look to Him. When thou liest down at night, look to Him. Oh, let not thy hopes or fears come between thee and Jesus, He says. Follow hard after Him. He will never fail thee. Looking unto Jesus. Oh, we can fail ourselves if we look to ourselves and try to have confidence in ourselves instead of looking to Him. Many people today 
their faith. Many prof- I'm going to say many professing Christians, many, rel- many church attenders, many Baptist church attenders today are walking around with faith in themselves instead of faith in Jesus. So let us always consider our aim looking unto Jesus and, and consider that glorious name tonight. And I pray that in spite of me, God may have, have used something to help us to see Him, His name, the author and finisher of our faith in, in some great way, in, in, in something great tonight. And we're just going to stop right there and... I, I pray that, that God uses this in some way. I pray that you uh, listened and could follow what I was trying to follow myself as I was studying, and uh, that, that God uses it in, in some way. Uh, we're about to close in a word of prayer, and after we pray, I would ask that you stay seated just for a second, just a little something I want to do, and, and also, please meet, uh, if you have not met Lewis and... Crispin, is that how you say it? Yes, I got it right. Okay, please meet our wonderful guests. And um, Brother Terry Metter, please close us in a word of prayer. And then I.